I need some traction. You need some traction. Let's get some traction. Hello, everybody. So just like Mike, I think technology sucks. Just kidding. That's not what he was saying. I know that. So I'm Susan, and today I am here to talk to you about direct response copywriting. It's something that doesn't really make it onto most growth, marketing, or VC conference agendas because it's usually not cool enough, and most of us are just too cool to talk about copywriting, but that's a little bit like being too cool to make money. None of us are that cool, right? So today I'm going to show you three or four, I can't remember because I updated my slides like very recently, takeaways and a few simple tactics to bring the magic of direct response to your marketing, whether you're selling SaaS or, well, especially if you're selling SaaS, because that's where it's missing the most. So this talk is really simple. I'll just present three to four, can't quite remember, fails and their fixes and a few tactics. But it's just copywriting, right? Nothing to it. I mean, we build tech products and invest in startups. No big deal that the greatest copywriters of the 20th century used to spend three to four months to create a single ad. We can beat that because we can write a blog post in an hour. Now, I personally spent years not knowing that I was a crappy copywriter because there aren't a whole lot of people in the startup world who were there to tell me that it's a priority to work on. But most startups are failing. They could be failing slightly upward, but like my Chinese mom always told me, don't compare yourself to the regular people behind you. Compare yourself to the people who are ahead of you, even if they're imaginary. So here we go with fail number one. As I've mentioned, I've personally made a lot of mistakes, mostly due to being immature. My first fail, navel gazing. What is navel gazing when it comes to direct response? It means creating content, again, for a bunch of different places that instead of selling or speaking to your customer says, me, 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 blah, 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 or jargon, 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 or I'm so cute. And maybe this baby really is cute, but you don't need to be in your content. You just need to sell stuff. Now, all of this is so obvious, isn't it? Let me tell you, navel gazing happens to smart people just like me and just like all of you. In fact, especially to smart people. Here is an example of the navel gazing content fail from a company that doesn't know they're being featured at this, con uh, at this conference today, uh, from our current accelerator batch at 500 startups, just picked from the hat. Um, take a look. Now, with all this jargon, which is underlined in yellow, this landing page sounds like it's been written for an investor pitch meeting. Vertical, platform, publishers, distribute, monetize. Whoa, take my money now. Not for the customer. As a layperson and maybe a potential publisher, whatever that means in this context, I have Instagram. I publish Instagrams, that counts, right? I have no idea what this company does. But that's not the first problem. The biggest fail here isn't the fact that seven out of 13 of the key major words on this landing page are complete jargon. The first problem is that none of them are about me, the visitor the potential customer. Jargon is navel gazing because it's you looking inward at your own product and at your own internal language that not a whole lot of other people speak. Vertical, monetized publishers. By contrast, and no, I'm not being sponsored, in this homepage section from Autopilot, none of the text sections are about Autopilot except kind of the logo. Everything is about the customer, the you. All of the text elements, your customers want to hear from you, 2x leads generated by companies who stay in touch every two to four weeks, 72% of consumers having, hate receiving generic emails and marketing, I believe that. All of the text elements are either directly about the you, me, 
or secondarily about the you. So when a company talks so soothingly and so knowingly about what I'm worried about, about the fact that I'm not emailing enough or not emailing period, about the fact that I need to increase lead gen immediately, and about the fact that I'm kind of embarrassed about those generic email blasts that I'm sending every once in a blue moon, then that company has got my attention. Here's how to fix this. Everyone loves looking at their own reflection. Have you ever noticed, the answer is yes, but have you ever noticed that when you walk by a particularly clean or shiny store window, everyone is looking at themselves? Your friend that's with you, she's looking at herself. Your boyfriend who's holding your hand, he's looking at himself. Your dog, he's looking at himself. Your copy's job is not to talk, talk, talk about your product, but to be the one holding the mirror. And you want to hold a mirror that not only reflects who they are right now, but who they could be. <laughs> so here's a quick rule of thumb. Just remember, because we want to get tactical here, right? So just remember 90-10. And if you're selling software or anything else, push yourself. Really, it's a stretch goal, but you can do it to make your words, push yourself to make your words, all of your words, customer facing. 90% about the you, the customer, and just 10% about the solution, the product. If you can't figure out 90-10 or can't remember it because it's you know, really complicated, Here's a, here's a simpler tactic that you can definitely go by. Make the first third about your customer, not about the product. That's the first third of anything, whether that's your landing page, your welcome email, or maybe in the welcome email it should be the first two thirds, or your home page, or your ads, or your anything. Any vector of growth that you have out there for you, make your first third or half or two thirds about the customer and the last bit about the solution. And by the way, when you make it about the customer, you do want to know that he's thinking about sleep, donuts, stuffed beer, dough, family time, and you're out here. My next fail is something that every business has been guilty of and is in fact very much related to navel gazing. It's because we know there's just so much goodness in here, in the self, that we can't not suggest it all. And in fact, this slide is the perfect illustration of that because you cannot even see the fail stamp against this background. So many visual choices are there. But when we give people too many choices, they fall prey to analysis paralysis. Man, I really came here, all the way here, to learn about analysis paralysis? That's so obvious. That's the most obvious thing. I would never do that. I'm a SaaS business. And yet, here we all are. This company, Condeco, just announced three days ago a 30 million Series A. Is it important for them to convert visitors into customers? Maybe not, with all that VC money. There is just so much on just this part of the page just so much. Just take it all in for just a moment. I couldn't even make enough arrows because it would be crazy. And yet, there's nothing, zero, nothing on this page that talks about the you, the customer. Here, the, hut, the headline and the subhead say, powering change in the workplace. Condeco is the leading global provider of office utilization and workspace scheduling solutions. That's a mirror, right, to the brand, but it's not a mirror to anyone else but the brand. And as a potential customer, like for example, what if I were a director of operations at a Fortune 1000 company and I happen to visit this page? I don't see anything that's talking to me, except for the part where I'm supposed to give them my money. This is a direct marketing fail, and it's too bad because I'm sure they have a great product. Here's another example from a well-known WordPress developer that makes a lot of really useful stuff. I'm personally a customer. So much, in fact, that they can't decide what to talk about here on their homepage. This is a classic case of navel-gazing because 
there's just so much choice. People just want to solve their problem. Get a cool WPML theme or get a nice plugin that makes site localization really easy. This is what they do. They don't want all of this stuff here and now. Now, there are so many more examples that I, I cannot go through them all. We, we think that we're you know, kind of immune from this or we're past this. It's just sort of for 1999 web companies, but it's not. The point is what is obvious isn't yet. Now, when you've learned your, your lessons in direct response, you know that your content's only job is to sell. Not to entertain, mostly yourself, or to navel gaze. Direct response copy is all about getting conversions, nothing else. Now, there can be a whole entire conference about conversions, and in fact, there are multiple. But here are two quick takeaways that you can implement right now. Number one, multiple links, one destination. S number two, Zero leaks, and that means no random social buttons, no liking our Facebook page, no support docs on the home page, no company news, WPML news, that's a real thing, nothing that doesn't lead to the conversion zone, whatever your conversion is. In this quick email example from Rami, all roads lead to Rome, aka the sales page, aka money. By the way, Ramit recently just hired, hired away, not that recently, he hired away the, the head of growth from Kissmetrics to be his head of growth. So content businesses, I guess, are a thing. There are three linked elements in the first half of this email, and none of them is a button. All three of the linked elements, the first hyperlink, that image, the circular image, and then the second little kind of hyperlink at the bottom, all go to the same page, the same place, the sales page. That's to say, there's only one exit, and that's through the gift shop. The next fail is kind of similar to sell everything, the sell everything problem that happens when there are too many product choices or too many uh, decision points. Not only do we feel an irresistible urge to sell everything, but we feel an even stronger urge to sell it to everyone. Direct response copy fights the good fight against too many audiences because it's highly specific, not generic. The example here could literally be a generic lorem ipsum test landing page from Instapage. I created an Instapage this morning and I'm pretty sure there's one of their templates that looked exactly like this. It's that generic. But sadly, it's not. This company just announced a $42 million Series B last week, eight days ago. And I guess it's going to help me find the best job available, whatever that is, and whoever I am. I don't know if you guys can see. We match you with the best jobs available. OK. By contrast, this vintage ad for travel is so specifically talking to one type of person and no one else. Reward your top executives with a sabbatical year in Britain on half pay. I, Susan, I don't have any top executives that I can reward, so obviously it's not talking to me. Not only should the you, in this case, be an executive of the executives, but this reader should also be cost conscious and dealing with human resources and team management challenges right now. It's that specific. By the way, it's an ad for a travel service that doesn't just say, best deals on trips to England, I wish, for everybody's sake here, I wish this vintage ad were more clear so that you could read every page turning word. By the way, does, it, has, has anybody recognized this ad? Dang, it's so awesome. This isn't your generic stock photo of a happy dude and his cool dude things. This guy, he's a man with taste. Paintings, multiple in the back there, including a few of his own creation, a great loft, as evidenced by these tall windows, and a tree-sized house plant, indicating he's ready for commitment. AKA, <laughs> AKA, a self-made Renaissance man of means. And as you would see if you read the text, which I won't read out loud because you know we're at work here, he's a man who's desired by classy yet sexy women, the kind of woman who's sassy enough 
to send him a special phone call just before a weekend trip to San Francisco. How specific is that? And by the way, it's an ad for Cologne. Direct response speaks so eloquently to one person that everyone else leans in to listen. So how can you implement this if you're a modern tech startup? It starts with building a customer persona that works. We all know this, right? It's really obvious. But here's what I encourage you to do. Build a single customer persona. Yep, a sample size of just one. Don't make it imaginary. Validate it with data, of course, but also with qualitative research. You want to make sure that that single person that you've invented isn't invented. They're actually just a representation of somebody who really exists. Your single customer persona should be as detailed as this. Here, uh, it's a customer persona for Amex. We can see that Robert want, has all, we know all of these different things about Robert. We know how much money he makes. We know what job he has. We know his uh, main activities in his life. Earn, learn, burn. We know he's a member of the NYU Alumni Association. And we know that he reads not only the New York Times, but also Wine Spectator. And we know his devices and his major purchases and all of those other things. If you're selling to a mid-sized corporation, you should know ex exactly who you're selling to. And not only that, but every other attribute about them. Who do they report to? How much money does the person that you're selling to make? How much money does their boss make? How long have they been in that position? And are they up for promotion? And when are they up for promotion? How big is their team? Who else are they trying to impress? Now, the next fail is the biggest one of all. Treating copywriting like it's just writing and doesn't have a place in growth marketing is a huge, huge mistake because your copy is all over your everything. There are so many places where your customer encounters your words. Each of these, your homepage headline, your email collector, your Google ads, your content marketing, your press releases, your accounts pages, your cancellation pages, your password resets, your thank you pages, each of these is an opportunity to nurture a lead, to convey your brand, and most importantly, to sell. Even your terms of service, well, if you're me. But definitely critical places like your thank you pages and your checkout flow and your cancellation pages. A lot of places that still don't get enough attention. It was the late, great copywriting god, Joseph Sugarman, who said, copywriting isn't for noobs. Oh wait, here's the actual quote. The best copywriters in the world are those who are curious about life, have many hobbies, like to travel, and master many skills. They hunger for experience and find other people interesting. They are very good listeners. In other words, it's a big job, a grown-up job. And to actually understand your 45-year-old SaaS purchasing manager at Goldman Sachs requires both depth and breadth of experience that you should be screening for very, very carefully in your hiring process, cannot be outsourced. I recently saw this, very recently this week, I saw this great copy test from Michael Agard over at Unbounce, and I wanted to share it because it's the perfect example of what the right message can do. Michael changed the text on this landing page from insights and experience from four years of research and over 350 A-B tests distilled into one 26-page free ebook. <gasps> Wow, that's a mouthful. And very me, 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 highly specific, but very me, me, me. Two, read the ebook, uh, read the book in just 25 minutes and get insights from four years of research and over 350 A-B tests. It's so simple. A baby could do it. Copy is so simple, right? Well, it resulted in almost 19% more downloads. So saying that copy is just writing is like saying it's just revenue. So what are the other simple tricks you can take away? I call them cheats. They're not really cheats, but I call them cheats to get your attention. OK, so on top of what we learned already, what else can you do? Some immediate wins. Number one, your customer on every page. Your customer on every page 
sounds really dumb, sounds really simple, but it helps a lot. You literally write your single customer persona, a brief summary of who they are, and a little picture of them if you can, if you don't use old school text edit to do all your copywriting like I do, right at the top of your composition doc. This works great in Google Docs because you can use the header, Word, you can use the header and put like pictures and other cool stuff in there. Um, mine is about a only semi-imaginary, it's actually based on somebody I know, but I had to change some of the details. Um, a guy named Lucas, he's a startup founder, CEO, he likes frisbee golf, he's a healthy eater, but he's into barbecue and tacos. He's not a cheapskate exactly, but he definitely won't be going to any Michelin places anytime soon. Uh, the company is logging 20k MRR and growing. He pays himself just 8k a month and he's only got three other people, but they're mainly developers. He knows, Lucas knows that they need to do email, but he doesn't and can't do all the writing himself because it's obvious, right? He's tried Upwork for writers, and they sucked. Or maybe he did at managing them, doesn't matter. And he knows that he's missing out on money every week that he doesn't send an email. So, hey, thanks for checking out Email for Startups. I do realize you are acting out of shameless self-interest, close more leads, something I can't read, get investors to reply, sell more stuff, nothing wrong with that, speaks directly to Lucas. And by the way, Lucas is a real person I know, I just had to change some things so that in case Lucas sees this talk, he's not like, hey, what's she doing? The second really quick trick, cheat, whatever you wanna call it, understand this one thing. All of your content is a funnel. That means the first three word cluster has one job. That's to convert people to read or scan the next cluster. Your headline is the top of your funnel, converting attention over to your subheadlines. Your subheadline only has one job and that's to be good enough to convert attention to the problem or benefits that you summarize underneath or to your CTA. When you start viewing your copy as a funnel, you'll stop wasting precious top of funnel attention on cutesy introductions or me, me, me talk that isn't doing any selling for you. And as you can see, I included this heat map. You know, we've all seen landing page heat maps and email heat maps, and they all basically look like this. I think it's a great evidence to show that most of the attention is right there at the top of the funnel. We have a unique and very limited opportunity to convince people to go a little bit further, a little bit further. The heat map literally looks like a funnel. My final quick cheat is really simple. The most simple, best thing you'll ever hear, in fact. Eliminate all superlatives from your copy. Amazing, best, best in class, best jobs available, world class, fastest, top. Superlatives are platitudes, and platitudes don't say anything. You have really little space on there to get people's attention and convert that attention into action. Use it wisely. You can do better than this. Finally, a quick recap of what we learned today. No navel gazing. Make it about the you, not you, but the you, your customer. Two, reduce needless choice. Always encourage people with a friendly smile to exit through the gift shop. Speak so eloquently to one person that everyone else leans in to listen. Finally, copywriting is a grown-up job. Treat it well. It's worthy of your time. It's worthy of the CEO's time. It's certainly worthy of my time. It's probably one of the most important things that I do at my job. I'm not too good for it. None of us are. Finally, here's how you can contact me or reach me. And uh, I learned this cool new trick at a recent conference that you can get notes if you go to this URL and sign up there. So thank you very much. Thanks for your patience. I need some traction. You need some traction.